ever sit by yourself and wish you could grow a flower that looks like a brain? Ever wish you could just walk through a portal into a Dr. Seuss book? Those were weird questions, and you probably said no. Regardless, I think Celosia is a plant everyone should try planting in their garden. In this video, I'm going to talk about Celosias generally, and then also explain the three main types, just so you know what's what. Celosias are in the Amaranth family, Amaranthaceae, and they originated in East Africa, where they're referred to as Mvungu. I don't know if I'm saying that right. If you're watching and you're from Africa, tell me what's what. In North America, they're also known as wool flowers because they're so soft and fuzzy. I like Dr. Seuss flowers. I think that is the most fitting name. They're what's called an edible ornamental. Yes. Looks beautiful and you can eat it. The flavor of the young leaves is not unlike spinach, but I stress young leaves. Once the plant starts to flower, that flavor will become quite bitter and you don't really want to be eating them anymore. But it is a good reason to sow from seed if you want to eat them because then you have access to all the young greens before the plant flowers. Usually when you buy them at garden centers, they're already flowering. So there's three main sort of types of celosias I'm going to mention. The plumed, which is like this one, the coxcomb or crested varieties, and the wheat varieties. The plume varieties have these soft feathery flowers and they come in amazing colors. Orange, pink, magenta, yellow, red. There are varieties with really bright green foliage and then varieties with really dark red foliage like this guy. The flowers are very flame-like and actually in ancient Greek the word celosia means flame-like. My baby even looked at it and said fire! <laughs> the plume varieties grow a couple feet high. I'm just gonna drop the term vertical interest. I'm also gonna say mass planting. Because imagine a giant mound of these flowers two feet high. Talk about eye-catching stunners. It'd be a Whoville for sure. The wheat varieties are probably the most low maintenance. Um, as you can see, they look similar to a wheat plant. You'll usually get either like a red purplish color or a pink color option. This sort of spike looks really good planted next to round flower heads. It creates really great vertical shape variety. The coxcomb or crested varieties are probably the most visually wild, that's what I would say. They look like morel mushrooms or like brains. They deal with something called fasciation, probably the most popular visual of fasciation. This circulating online image of this elongated, sort of flattened disc aster. If you've ever seen this image and think to yourself, like, oh, that's not real, or well, this is good editing, it's real. It's a form of genetic abnormal growth. Sometimes the genes of plants are purposely altered to create fasciation just because some people think it looks so cool, but usually it's naturally uh, something that happens and it can often be a result of uh, disease, infections, things like that. This naturally happened at some point with the coxcomb or crested celosias, and now it's a variety that is often highly sought after. The crested or coxcomb varieties really benefit from staking so if you buy some and they start to grow really tall those heads are very heavy and would really probably benefit from some support. Deadheading celosias is a thing. <laughs> are you scratching your head? You're like how in the world? Really it is super important if you want a nice bushy healthy plant because they do get quite tall. This plumosa variety for example once this is planted in the ground, which I am planning to do, I'm going to want to deadhead this main plume up here to encourage some bushier growth and some more stem and flower growth down at the base. Otherwise it can become quite like stocky and woody. If you don't do it, it'll still grow, it just might not look as full. Also, all three types of celosias dry really well. It's a really cool dried flower. Just snip them, hang them upside down, make sure there's enough airflow, and you can really stun people in the winter if you're making dried arrangements. Celosia will tolerate partial shade, but it thrives in full sun, okay? Six to eight hours minimum. The main way you can screw up tending to a celosia is if you overwater it. Celosias don't like to be waterlogged. Keep those feet dry. Definitely make sure your soil is well draining and not clay heavy. If it's too clay heavy, add some sand. If it's unhappy from overwatering, it'll literally just like mm, melt away, droop. 
So if you see that starting to happen, back off on your watering. It's a good telltale sign. Seeding celosia can be tricky. I recommend seeding them really heavily because that's what they do if left to their own devices in the garden. The germination rate is actually pretty low. So what it does is when it releases its seeds, there's like thousands of seeds in one pod. So it'll self-seed very readily and in huge amounts. So if you don't want your celosia spreading and you have quite a few plants, cut those dried flower heads off at the end of your season. Back to the germination though, cover them lightly with soil, keep them moist, and they should germinate within a few weeks depending on your region. Celosias are also really prone to transplant shock, basically like a plant panic attack resulting in death. <laughs> Okay, so if you're seeding and you successfully germinate multiple plants and you're ready to move them outdoors, take it slow and be very gentle with them. Disturbing roots can be one of the main causes of transplant shock. And Celosia does have pretty sensitive roots, so if you can seed it in a container that you'll put straight outside, or in one of those containers you can put right into the ground, like the choir pots, those are really good options. If you do a plastic pot and you're worried about transplant shock, you can even just cut the bottom off and place your container into the ground or the larger container for the season. I've done that as an act of desperation. It just makes it hard for the plant to spread horizontally. Really, have you ever seen a flower like this sitting in a field of celosia? Imagine that.